Hey, what's up, fellas? We're doing some more high emissivity, high temperature ceramic coating testing today. This new composition works extremely well in thick coatings on stone and refractories and concretes. It works okay on metal during the temperature excursion, but during cool down, the expansion pretty much flakes it off. So just a quick recap, this is one of the first tests we did with the high temperature ceramic coating and the stuff performed phenomenal. But this is a very thin coat recipe. You can't go over, you know, a couple of mils. It's very dependent on that. But on the stone, it doesn't matter. You can go fairly thick, but even then it still has some spalling issues. You can see here, it survived this test amazing, which led me to, to go ahead and go further. So we lined a furnace with this high emissivity coating. We were able to get up to 2,933 degrees as the max temp, as you can see on the bottom there. But it melted the furnace down. Even though it melted the furnace down, we still retained a large volume of the ceramic coating on the exterior furnace walls. So we chipped all that burn up stuff out and put some newer higher temperature refractory in here with some steel formwork. We burnt the steel formwork out and then we added some of the refractory coating. But because it requires such a thin coating, it didn't paint on there very well and I feel like we melted it off of there. This stuff isn't made for 2900 degrees. It's made for lower temps. This is my furnace hat idea that I'm trying to shoot infrared radiation back down into the furnace with an 1800 degree emitter rather than just letting that laser beam of IR heat shoot right up into the sky, which is right where the crucible is, we want to bounce it back down in there. So it didn't work out too well. We did not obtain the 2900 degrees again because we melted all of the refractory lining off of there. As you can see, it's completely gone. So we got to get a thicker recipe. I've added some white sand to this mix to see if it'll allow me to do thick coats any better. So we're gonna test that. I've been protecting this metal section with the high temp ceramic. And so far, nothing's cracking yet. You can see down there where it cracked. I'll let you know how it goes. I'm gonna paint this up and we'll take a look to see if we can avoid all that cracking. So 10 minutes in that back still ain't glowing. Just about, maybe it is just a little bit more. Yeah, it should be at that temperature. Yeah, she's glowing. They say 900 degrees is a dull red. There's your dull red 900 degrees. They say that the temperature indicator is independent of the emitter source. So no matter what the material is, if it's that color red, it's going to be 900 degrees, whether it's brick or steel or any other type of metal for that matter. Half hour runtime. So I painted this piece of stainless steel without any surface prep at all. It's just a piece of metal I pulled off the shelf and painted a very thick coating on it. But I did it the burn egg style where I got it hot and painted it on there when it was about 300 degrees. And it's doing pretty good. All right, it's the next day. These coupons have not been sandblasted, by the way. I kind of rubbed this off with my hand just to see how durable it is. And because it has sand in it now, when you do this, it, the sand rolls out and actually helps you rub away the material. So it is stronger than it looks, me rubbing on it. It's just when the sand does come loose, it gives you a little bit of extra rub. So I rubbed the top off of this. It's not sticking the best. It's coming right off pretty much. And this was put on extremely thick. They say don't do that. You're not supposed to put this stuff on really thick. 
as you can see here it is just caked but it still didn't really spall off of there it stayed on throughout the test this stuff's not an airplane wing it isn't going to be structural so me just rubbing it off isn't necessarily discrediting its abilities any it's very similar to the muffler repair material if you've ever done a muffler ma repair material with that uh, substance they send with the felt that you wrap whether or not that's beneficial or not i don't know yet so we're going to fire this forge up here take a look at what we can do for temperature wise see if we can hit that 2900 degrees and to see if this mixture withstands the torture and that's probably going to be the last bit of testing we do with this material and we're going to be moving on to the aluminum phosphate maybe some sodium phosphate we're going to be doing phosphate binders they can handle temperatures on the order of 3000 degrees So this did pretty well. It's not coming off of there. Very good ceramic paint for stone. I thought it was gonna fall off right there, but it didn't. It is cracked a little bit right there. But it sticks to stone very well. Getting stuff like this to stick to metal without sandblasting it is very hard to do. This was not sandblasted. So even with the non-sandblasted artifact, it did quite well. These other coupons here that I have are on non-sandblasted metal. So this stuff definitely allows a thicker coat. Probably better for metal. I'm going to be doing some sandblasting testing too. It's just, there's so many different tests you got to do with this kind of material. This right here is a very old test burner that I built many years ago. It was used to actually design this bad boy right here. And that's how I made those silicone carbide nozzles that I sell. I'm running low and, and China's falling apart. I don't think I can buy any more. I might be done on the silicon carbide, guys. China is falling apart. Every time I order something, I fear I won't get it because of the, the potential that we're going to war with them and all this other stuff. It's a nightmare, dude. So let's fire this thing up and see what this coating does on this thin shell test burner. cool down get sit there and watch it busting off it might be done but you can kind of see the pieces as it contracts so as far as metal application goes it's not necessarily suitable for that yet For any more than one application you have to put it on after every cool down as for the stone it's working out pretty good so all right so when it cools off everything just falls off of there pretty much but it withstands the torture of the excursion itself so we're going to try an old trick i do in my kitchen a lot when I'm cooking eggs.
that didn't go over as planned. It's a little too hot. It needs to be about 300 degrees, I think, for this to work. I'm making a massive mess at this point. Now we're gonna get this off of my welding table. But I feel like it's more durable. There it goes, it starts to cool off. But it will stay on there without falling off at all while the burner's running on metal. The metal shrinks and just kind of pops it off of there. So, it survives the temperature excursion. It just doesn't dig the cool down on metal. And this was not sandblasted, so I'm half tempted to sandblast this and do a sandblast test, because it does stick good in some spots. Why can't we get it to do this everywhere? I think we'll try it one more time. Maybe I'll put it on there hot again. So as we can see, the coating did survive the temperature excursion. It's the cool down that's brutal on this particular batch. So this particular blend only works one time on thin metal that gets really hot. But it's just fine for stone. does not seem to have any problems because as I said it's the cool down that's getting this stuff and this stuff doesn't contract much when it cools down boy is that blistering we have still yet to try the sandblasting I'm, I'm telling you the surface coat really does mean everything here's a coupon here that I heated that was not sandblasted and it did pretty well from the other day. So there you go. This stuff is so white, it's beaming. Big old flakes of it. I'm gonna have a look at that here in a second when it cools down. It's weaker than a cornflake. 